I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I need to put a 1224 thread in the end of this bearing block. That way I can run the 316 shaft into it, make the linkage. I originally intended to go with a 1024, but decided a 1224 was going to work better. Now to bore the hole, I'm going to set this up in the fore jaw, similar to what I did to bear, bore this bearing hole. Not the Jacob's Chuck and the tailstock. Set the center drill. Drop oil on the tip of the drill bit. Plug in the lathe. Now, for a 1224 thread, the book actually calls for a number 16 drill bit. I don't own a number drill. The nearest fractional size is 3 16 And I have a bunch of those. So I'm going to use a 3 16 to bore this, make it ready for the 1224 tap. Drop oil on the drill bit. And we are set. 
Now to tap the hole, easy way to make sure that the tap goes in straight and square is as soon as you drill it, and with the lathe unplugged, you mount the tap into the chuck just hand tight. And you loosen the tailstock up, put a drop of oil on the tap, you want to leave the tailstock free, you want it to slide. This is a Chinesium tap. And I really don't want to break it off in there because it's the only 1224 tap I have. And since I have but two holes to tap, I'm going to save the tap for the second hole. Now the hole tapped, I'll pull the part out of there. With the tap started straight into the hole, I can finish tapping through with the hand. I have a better feel for it. And since this is a junky little cheap tap and I don't want to break it, I'm going to carefully feed it down through until I get the last cut made. The other thing I have to be careful of, this is hot rolled steel plate and it has hard spots. So I want to be able to feel those hard spots before I snap the tap off. Even with this extremely inexpensive Harbor Freight tap and die set, I'm able to do a fair job as long as I'm careful. I have to remember what it'll do and what it won't do. Now I can take it out on the belt sander and round these edges off back to the line that I drew on there and turn this into a nice looking bearing housing. Then I need to cut the shaft to length, thread both ends. Then I need to make the step shafts to mount the bearings onto the cranks. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, it all happens. It just takes a while. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all.